Why is Lepta Church a house church ministry? Why do we meet in homes? That's the subject of this video. The answer might surprise you or maybe it won't, but my hope in this video is to be raw, embarrassingly authentic about the process of how we got to where we are as a ministry today. I don't know why my glasses feel weird to me. <laughs> Honestly, even if you have no interest in doing ministry the way we do ministry, I hope this video is helpful to you and is an encouragement. That's our hope. That's our prayer. What's at the heart of this video um, honestly can apply to any and every church in ministry. The truth is the church belongs to Jesus Christ because the church belongs to Jesus. The form it takes, what it looks like, what it sounds like, what it feels like, it's all up to him. So from our first day to today and into the future, let the church is fully surrendered to the vision God has for us. And that's literally what our name means to our community. Lepta means surrender. We do what God tells us to. He is God. We are not basically. Okay. So why is Lepta Church a house church ministry? Because we have to be. We never had a choice and we still don't. God called us to this ministry in spite of the inner struggles, and there have been many inner struggles, in spite of naysayers, negativity, let the church meets in homes because that's God's clear direction for us. We have never had any other option. I know there are people who set out day one, they're like, okay, I want to start a house church. And that's their first choice. Many of them see house churches in the New Testament. They see Paul referencing it. They see it in the book of Acts. And they're like, yeah, like that's the kind of church I want to lead. I want to be a part of. That's awesome. But that wasn't us. That wasn't the case with us. So I'm going to break down what that practically looked like for us and some of the struggles along the way. I'll also share the excitement of this kind of ministry. Have there been struggles? Sure. <laughs> but the rewards and blessings far outweigh those. And we truly do walk in joy and peace as we obey him. Okay. So I'm going to be really open, really raw, but don't think I'm like stuck in these like negative places. Okay. But I'm going to be honest. Let's start at the beginning. Okay. <laughs> the beginning was a calling to this area back in 2009. Two years later, the call was clarified by the Lord. We knew we were going to plant a church in the Little River, North Myrtle Beach area. We joined a church plant team about an hour north of here outside of Wilmington. And we had an amazing experience there. Incredible people. Our time there was just tremendous. So in 2017, we started our paperwork. Uh, we didn't know exactly what our church would look like and our name means surrender. So we we're just really patient, wanted to trust Jesus each step of the way. Um, I assumed we would be a small to medium sized church. That's what I had in mind. I think deep down I was rooting for a medium sized church, nothing massive, just a respectable sized church that also had a great community friendships, great stuff. But ultimately, we just wanted God's vision and God's plan. I'm reminded of the song, Your Will, Your Way, White Flag song. I don't know if you remember that. But the next year was surprising to us. There were two things that happened to us in 2018. The funds we needed for the proposed budget was just, they, those funds just weren't coming in, okay? We did have donors and we did have generous people. Don't get me wrong, okay? but it was nothing like what we needed to run any semblance of a traditional church plant. That wasn't my choice. I wasn't like, hey, you know. it just, they just didn't come in. Okay. So I, I was in this place where I was like, ah, but I didn't totally panic because I was planning on being self-funded anyway, not paid by the church. So the church didn't have to worry about my salary, but even without my salary to worry about, we just didn't have enough to fund my picture of what Lepta Church should be. The other thing was we had a tiny team, 
Okay, we were grateful for every person on our team, but we were really small. But here's the thing, and you might need to hear this right now. God gave us everything we needed. God supplies the church with people and resources, and he gives the perfect amount. I love 2 Corinthians 9, 8, which tells us, God is able to make all grace abound toward you, that you, always having all sufficiency in all things, may have an abundance for every good work. We always have all sufficiency in all things, meaning we always have enough and even an abundance for every task the Lord gives us. So Lepta Church had the perfect amount of people and the perfect amount of money. It was part of his purpose, part of God's plan. 2 Corinthians 9 8, we always have all sufficiency in all things and even an abundance for every good work. What is God's design for Lepta as we are starting out? What is that? The only way we could meet with people and the resources that we had was in a home. So we walked in obedience and made plans to start in a home. We weren't going to like, okay, say God, God, we're not going to go refuse God, reject him saying you didn't give us, you didn't give us enough money. We didn't get enough people for the type of church we wanted. We aren't going. We knew clearly we were going to start out in a home, not knowing long term what the future of Lepta would be. But Lepta means surrender and we were going to be surrendered to Jesus and do the things do things the way he wanted us to do them. Okay. Now I knew about house churches. All right. In Bible college, I read a book called Pagan Christianity. Um, You may be familiar with it. It's like a, was a very popular house church book. I even visited a few uh, house churches myself. And if you watched our video, my first house church, I share how we briefly ran our own house church and saw unreached people touched by the Lord. So part of me was excited, okay? And there had been times in the past, I felt like house churches were really cool, even imagining what it might look like if our future church plant looked like that. I knew house churches reached people for the Lord and could be very effective. I knew that, okay? But that was not my preference. I wa- it wasn't what I wanted. It felt too small. I'm going to I'm going to be honest with you. It felt too limited. It just it just wasn't the dream. I dreamed of big stuff or what I thought was big stuff. But we didn't have clarity for the future yet. We just knew the next step was to start out in a house. And I'm grateful he reveals only what we need to know in the moment. I don't know how I would have handled it knowing, you know, it was going to stay that way. All right. Oh, how's it going so far? <laughs> um, there was frustration and uh, fear as well. It wasn't all excitement. A nagging fear in my mind was what if it literally never takes off? I felt like we had to prove ourselves right away, maybe outgrow things super quick. And that is often what house church ministry is. It's a brief step before you start the real ministry later on, right? That's kind of like the the mentality that we can carry. So to feel better about our situation, I kept reading pagan Christianity and I'm trying to get inspired, get that inspiration, take more ownership over what God had led us to. That was really when I got into the biblical evidence for house churches. I really I, I like sold myself on it and had to rest on God's call and his word. House churches aren't the way, aren't the only way to do church, but they are very biblical. I would remind myself of that. Oh, this is so biblical. It shouldn't be surprising that God would lead us down this path. It's all over the New Testament. Our church looked very much like the first ones did. And that was, that was a cool aspect of it. All right. So here, here's where I'm going to be super duper vulnerable with you. It wasn't all encouragement and biblical roses. Left the church was killing my flesh. Honest to goodness, it was so painful. I loved the meetings. Our gatherings were so special. And while I was there, I felt like 
I was in heaven. It was beautiful, especially while I was there. But like getting back home, reflecting with the Lord, reality began setting in. I began having thoughts like, if we stay in this much longer, this person or this person still won't think we're a real church because we meet in a house. If we stay in this much longer, people in our sending church might think I'm a failure. We're a failure. I personally face questions like, when are you going to start? People asking me that, when are you going to start? Because in their mind, the church is a building, (laughs) no building, no church, you know? Yeah, I get it. You're meeting and everything. But when is it really going to be a church for real, Daniel? When are you really going to be a church? And then there was this fear. What if we don't grow fast enough? Or what if we just stay like this forever? I guess God helps us face our fears, doesn't he? He he lets us face our fears sometimes. I'm opening my heart to you right now. Uh, This is raw, fleshly stuff I battled. There was more fear of man in me than I realized. And God went to work on me and my heart, which I am so grateful for because this fleshly fear was ugly. So I was torn. I loved our gatherings. I did. I believed in this way of doing church, but my flesh was reacting to it. And looking back, it was a sign we really are following God's leading. We really are. Galatians 5, 6, you might be familiar with it, says, Walk by the Spirit, and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. If my flesh wants one thing and God wants something else, you go with what God is calling you to, not what your flesh desires, because your flesh is opposed to God. And the calling God has on your life. The two are opposing forces. Now, How did we come to realize we would remain a house church? That house church wasn't just going to be a pit stop like it is for so many churches. That happened our first summer, the summer of 2019. God used a man named Pete to show us that he wanted us to remain a house church ministry long term. Um, Pete was this guy I met shortly after we moved here. We had an instant connection. I began running into him randomly and knew, okay, the Lord had purpose in it. There are no coincidences. There are none. After a handful of interactions and conversations, I felt the prompting of the Lord to go ahead. It was like, all right, let's invite Pete to one of our gatherings. It was so interesting because he politely refused. He was like, I don't believe in any of that stuff. Right? He was really honest. I encouraged him that we don't force anybody to believe anything and that we would love to have him spend time with us. And I told him, I was like, we aren't like any church you've been to, Pete. And he smiled and said, every church says that. <laughs> And I would, I told him, well, it's literally true for us. I know every church says that it's actually true for us. In fact, we don't even meet in a church. We meet in a living room. And he didn't know what to say to that. He was caught by surprise. Like he was intrigued and he actually came. The next morning he attended our Lepta gathering and he was met with love and kindness and acceptance. And it was awesome. I was so proud of our team. They treated him so well. We would later find out that at our gatherings, God was working on Pete's heart. And he was only able to attend a couple times. He worked at actually the Walmart Auto Center where Sunday was one of their busiest days. They almost always scheduled him on Sundays. And it frustrated him. He wanted to be with us on Sunday, which is part of why we no longer meet on Sundays. Um, It's just not a practical time for many of the people um, we minister to and share the gospel um, with. So we actually don't have that issue anymore, which I'm so grateful for. Um, But Pete never would have come if we were a conventional church and he would have admitted that. He only came because he was intrigued. He was like, you meet in the living room, what? And it actually didn't even feel like church to him. He was in a living room. It was like family. I knew people were slipping through the cracks and that church just wasn't reaching those people 
but we could, and house churches could. The clarity we had been praying for came over the following month. It may not be flashy, fancy, impressive. It might kill my flesh, deny every earthly desire, and cause some Christians to misunderstand or even speak against us. But we had to remain a house church because that's what God was leading us to do. The Lord encouraged us that there were more Pete's out there, and he loves them and wants us to reach them. Pete would go on telling you to express faith in Jesus Christ, even though he was so closed off before. Another man named Mark, who wouldn't go to a conventional church, also made a profession of faith. And this was so intense and so sad, but both men have since passed away. Our ministry, if it had not been a house church ministry, would not have been structured to reach these people. And Jesus loves them. They should mean something to us too. They're souls. They should mean something to us. There are people slipping through the cracks and they have to be reached. And in Pete's case, he wasn't open to stepping foot in an institutional church. Same with Mark. If we had not been here serving in obedience to God's calling for us to be a house church, they may have died without ever knowing the love of Christ. We knew Beyond a shadow of a doubt, God was calling us to remain a house church, to reach out to and love the Pete's and the Marks. Okay, when he revealed that, that we are meant to stay a house church, to our church board, we knew we had to follow Jesus' lead. We were like, we are choosing your way. It's literally our, our name. And this is his church. God gets to decide what our churches and ministries look like. Okay. Just the way there is. There's no best way to do church. It is just a matter of finding out what Jesus' way is for your community. This is just the way he led us. And we are honored and filled with joy as we get to participate with him and obey. He might call you to this kind of ministry too. There are so many people out there that just won't step foot into a church. But they would be willing to hang out with you in a living room, learn about Jesus in your home or a backyard or wherever. Or maybe he isn't leading you to that kind of ministry. And that's okay. It's all up to him. That's the point. But we found it for ourselves, the calling of God for our church. And with it, we found amazing peace. Not only that, we saw the future and the potential of how God can use house churches all over the globe to reach people for Christ. And we get to be a part of it. When I shared the news with the team, that was one of my favorite things to talk about just the excitement of the future, just because our individual house gatherings are small doesn't mean God is doing something small here. It's something huge. We're actually part of a movement. The future of the church will include house churches because his love doesn't want to leave anyone behind. It will take all believers from institutional church to house churches working together to reach as many people as we can with the love and hope of the gospel. Why is Lepta Church a house church ministry? It wasn't my decision. Heavens no. It wasn't the decision of our church board. We asked God and he was faithful to reveal it to us over time. His way for your ministry and your life is always the best way. That's the moral for anyone watching this. Go with God's plan. Right now, our ministry is reaching many people like Pete and Mark, and we wouldn't be if it wasn't for our great God who has given us this ministry as a gift. We did not choose it, but we wouldn't have it any other way. There may be naysayers. We certainly have had ours. Oh Lord, help us. We have had our naysayers.
Even though the New Testament is full of house church examples, there will be Christians who will fight against you or push back against what God is calling you to, often because they just don't understand. They don't know. You can't listen to them. It's all about what the Lord wants. Remember Jonah, if you are called to have a house church and you disobey and get a building, it's not going to go well for you at all. Okay. Not only would you be dishonoring God, the church might fall apart. Eventually, I think you'll probably end right back in a home leading church the way he originally told you to. It works the other way too, right? If you are a house church and God is calling you to move into a building and you refuse, that's no good either. It's always his choice. You follow God. It is his choice. It's always been his choice. And it will always be his choice. Life that leapt a life is to be surrendered to him. As Paul wrote in Romans 12 2, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. And as you obey, your heart aligns with his. And today, I just am so thrilled about God's calling for Lepta. And the struggle isn't what it was. There are new struggles. <laughs> All right. It's ministry. Ministry has drama. But not with how we meet as a church. That is pure joy. What an amazing God we serve. Blessings to you, your family and your ministry, feel free and comment below if you've got questions, comments, concerns, anything that brings back a lot of memories is something I say a lot. <laughs> if you enjoy our videos and haven't yet, be sure to take a moment and subscribe to our channel. We would love to have you join the family and please reach out because we want to be here for you no matter where you are in your journey. Thanks for watching. We love you. And so does our great God. See what great love the Father has lavished on us, that we should be called children of God. And that is what we are. We'll see you next time.